Hello, everyone. Welcome to jobs.ac.uk Careers in China webinar on research collaboration. My name is Dr. Christina Yan Zhang, an international education expert. Until recently, I was China director of QS, the leading world university ranking agency. In 2016, my work at QS was effectively endorsed by China's vice premium, Madan Liu Endong, who quoted QS ranking in the state council, influenced the past five years funding allocation to Chinese universities. I have worked closely with most top Chinese university presidents on developing world-class universities and the disciplines in the past seven years. It's really a pleasure to chair the webinar today. The webinar is for PhD students and academics who are considering moving their career to a university in China. Today, we will provide you an opportunity to learn more about the exciting research opportunities on offer and the fundings available to help you to make the move. Firstly, I would like to invite our panelists to give you a brief 30 second introduction about themselves and their role at the university. Dr. Yu Zhang from Harbin Institute of Technology. Could we start from you? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Yu Zhang from the Faculty of Computing, Harbin Institute of Technology. And I'm the director assistant in charge of the uh, global recruitment. And uh, as you know, HIT is known as the cradle of engineers and uh, is a leader in aerospace engineering and for other areas is also in a leading way. And uh, the HIT has the great HIT strategy, which could be translated into one university, three campus, because we have uh, three campuses located in three cities. So that's, I think that will be very flexible for our uh, um, uh, our partners and uh, who are very interested in R uh, HIT. So I think that's uh, that is all for our university and um, for me. And welcome to HIT. Welcome to Faculty of Computing. Thank you so much. And next, let's uh, welcome Professor Gong Xiang Liu from Nanjing University. Hi everyone. I want to introduce myself at first. Uh, my name is Gong Xiang Liu, also the deputy uh, director of the human resources of uh, human resources of Nan University. And uh, before I become a member of the uh, division of uh, human resources, I work for the department of mathematics. And as a mathematics, uh, I have to say that. Uh, it is undoubtedly that the uh, University is one of the top 10 universities of China. So, I just want to say one word, welcome to China, welcome to Nan University. Thank you very much. That's, that's brilliant. We all know there is another famous mathematician, uh, Professor John Nash. He has a beautiful mind and you have yeah, a yes, yes, mind, yes, yes, you know, yes, which yes. is amazing. Next, yes, yes. Uh, let's uh, welcome Professor Yang Zhang from Sichuan University. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yang Zhang, and uh, I'm a professor in plant science in Sichuan University. So I did my PhD at my postdoc in UK, in Norwich, a small town, but a very beautiful town in England. And uh, since four years ago, I came to Sichuan University to start my research group. And uh, my university is one of the biggest universities in China, and it covers the very a large range of disciplines, including medical science, engineering, science, art, and literature. And uh, we are very uh, proud of our universities. We have we are one of the uh, oldest universities in China, which was started in 19th century. Although it's not comparable to most UK universities, but I think. EO has a very long history and we are really welcome to, to come to our university and let's uh, do uh, research, teaching together. Thank you, Professor. And I remember, you know, your medical school, especially in terms of 
a dental related research is number one in China and really world leading, you know, around the world. So it's, it's great to have you here. And next, we're very delighted to have a professor, you know, Victor Chen, uh, who is from Tsinghua University. Professor Chen. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. So this is Victor Chen from Tsinghua Shenzhen International Graduate School. I am a professor in data science and information technology, and I'm also associate dean in charge of human resource, including faculty recruitment. So first, please allow me to briefly introduce our school. Tsinghua Shenzhen International Graduate School, or in short, Tsinghua 6, was launched in March 2019. Tsinghua 6 is the only campus of Tsinghua University outside of Beijing. It is an upgrade and integration of the previous Tsinghua Graduate School at Shenzhen and the Tsinghua Berkeley Shenzhen Institute, TBSI. So we offer graduate programs across seven theme areas, including energies and materials, data science and information technology, health and medicine, marine engineering and technology, future human habitats, environments and ecology, and innovations management. These three areas overcome traditional borders between academic disciplines and promote interdisciplinary research and learning. So I'm looking forward to communicate with you and to, show, to let you know more about school today. We are open for collaboration and welcome everyone to join us in Tsinghua 6. Thank you. That's wonderful. As everyone knows, Shenzhen is one of the most vibrant, you know, economic, you know, cities in China. And it has a big Bay Area, you know, development which is attracting huge interest around the world. So if that's somewhere, you know, you might want to have a look, I definitely recommend it. And next, we are very delighted to have, you know, Yu Zhou from Shanghai Tech. Hello everyone, nice to see you all today. This is Yu Zhou, Director of Human Resources of Shanghai Tech. You may call us Shanghai Tech. I am now in charge of human resources services, including talent recruitment, employee benefit and relationships. We, uh, with the support of the Shanghai local government and the Ch Chinese Academy of Science, Shanghai Tech University is a young, resources-rich university in China. Shanghai Tech has six schools and four research institutes are focusing on the research fields of energy, materials, mm -hmm. biology related to the human health, computer science and engineering, electronical engineering and biomedical engineering, physics and chemicals, mathematics and humanity. Thanks to the job AC to give us this opportunity. If you are interested in Shanghai Tech, please contact us. Thank you. Thank you. And everyone knows, you know, Shanghai Tech uh, is fully supported by the top level of academia, you know, institutes, the Chinese Academy of Science. So it can be a very great route to access top scientists in China. And uh, so we have had a quick brief introduction of everyone on our panel. So I want to, you know, ensure uh, there are some housekeeping issues on how we can let our viewers to submit questions, you know, to our panelists. So if you are watching live and want to ask us a question, please use the chat box on the side of your YouTube screen to submit your question. You will only be able to ask a question in this way if you are signed into YouTube. If you're not on YouTube, please tweet at Jobs AC UK using the hashtag Jobs Q. In addition, most of our panelists will be moving into individual meeting rooms at the end of this webinar. Please do feel free to visit one or more of the meetings rooms immediately after this webinar if you want to discuss your career opportunities with a specific university. The join links for these meetings will be available in your pre-webinar email and in the chat box at the end of this webinar. So now let's uh, go through some of the questions already submitted by our audience. 
The first question our audience asked is, what type of academic opportunities are currently available in China? Is there any growth in certain academic disciplines or a demand for certain skill sets and uh, areas of expertise? Good. Uh, shall we perhaps start with Victor? Sure. So like I uh, introduced earlier, uh, we are uh, working on seven uh, theme areas. So these seven theme areas are, also, are all important areas in Shenzhen and also the Greater Bay areas in China. Uh, for example, data science and information technologies, uh, IT. The other T is BT, bioengineering and technologies. So two T are the major uh, development topics in Shenzhen. But to support these two topics, we also need to have, for example, marine engineering, uh, future human habitats like smart and management. Uh, skill is also needed to support that. Uh, the environments, uh, how, we, how do we make sure that the environment uh, is safe uh, and so forth, and our health is also important. So these seven areas are our main focus. So we welcome um, researchers in these seven areas to join us. Christina, that's my response. That's fantastic. Um, Ms. Yu Zhou, would you also like to comment on these questions? Uh, Shanghai Tech is a now seeking talents in the foreign uh, fields. School of Physical Science and Technology focus on the energy system materials, uh, photo and photon and uh, uh, condensate state, uh, materials biology, environmental science and engineering. School of science, uh, Life Science and Technology um, focus on the, the area of the uh, molecular and the cell biology, structure biology, and neuroscience, uh, uh, stir cells and uh, uh, regenerative medicine, system biology, and so on. School of Information Science and Technology focus on the computer science, electronical engineering, information tech, uh, engineering, artificial intelligence, network and uh, communication. School of Entertainment, Ship and Management focus on the economy, fin finance, uh, accounting, marketing, management, uh, marketing uh, strategy and uh, entertainment. Ship. School of uh, Creative and Art focus on intelligent design and uh, um, entertainment design. Uh, Shanghai Tech also have uh, some uh, institute for the ad advanced uh, alumni medical studies um, and the uh, IFIMAN Institute, Institute of Mathematical Science and uh, uh, Institute of uh, Humanities. Uh, we can find, we can search some of the uh, top the faculty in such uh, fields. Uh, if, uh, if you are uh, if you want to more information, please visit uh, our website. Yes. That's um, our website is uh, 3wshanghaitech.edu.cn. Yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the next question is, it can sometimes be a little bit challenging to access research funding and uh, could you please explain how the funding application process works in China, including how long it usually takes? So for these questions, could we perhaps invite uh, Professor Liu from Nanjing University to talk about it? Okay, uh, let me try to answer this question. <laughs> okay. uh, at present, there are many kinds of funding support for scientific research workers in China, including from the country or from province or even for universities. For example, in our university, every new faculty can get a start fund for that fund. And also you can apply another fund from our division of natural science and the division of social, uh, social science. 
you can get a fund. But also you can find uh, get fund for a province and the China and other country. Uh, the application cycle of national province uh, province and uh, is usually takes three months is to half a year. And uh, the school fund can be obtained very short, uh, very quickly, uh, usually within half a month or just uh, one week. Okay, that's enough. Thank you okay, so much. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, shall we also invite uh, Professor Yang Zhang from Sichuan University to maybe add a few more points on this question? Uh, Thank you. Uh, I think Professor Liu gave very, very uh, detailed uh, examination uh, uh, examples for the funding source. And uh, I can add that some of the funding source. We uh, also have a medical school which was linked to the hospital. So normally, if you are working with uh, biomedicine, and you can have fund individually directly from the hospital or even from the charity. That is one thing we can do. And also, uh, in many places such as Shenzhen, Shanghai, or Chengdu, we have a lot of well, companies. So we have normally we have this uh, collaboration between the school and the uh, com community, and sometimes they are have enormous funding. I know some of my colleagues have even five times the funding than the national supported uh, uh, from the company. So I think that's one. Uh, um, wait. Uh, also, we have, uh, for example, in NSF, the National Science Foundation of China, we have the so-called international collaboration. For example, the Chinese part can apply from NSF, and the uh, foreign part can apply from their own agency. And then once the two parts can be matched, so you can apply to it. So if you, for example, you are a foreigner in China, you can apply from a Chinese part, also, if you have a friend or colleague from your original country or another country, you can ask them to co-submit uh, an uh, application. And normally this kind of uh, proposal was being, uh, will be announced, such as being two to three months ahead of the deadline, and then you can apply to it. And uh, like Professor Liu says, the review uh, process takes normally about three to six months. And uh, I think, uh, pretty much if you have good idea and also if you can learn something more about the policy about the funding agents uh, it's, I think it's relatively easier than many European countries to get the funding because so China so far I think we spent about six percent of our total GDP into R&D so I think the ratio will be increased to about 10 percent in the coming years. And considering the, uh, the size of the GDP, we have a lot of funding opportunities in the next 10 years. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's really interesting you're talking about that because I know a lot of my friends uh, who are currently at, uh, you know, like some Western universities, they're a little bit, you know, like worry about funding, especially with the COVID-19 situation. The students are not coming as they have done before. But at this moment, uh, I know there is a lot of exciting opportunities, both for funding from public bodies, as you have mentioned, but also increasingly there are more and more like private sector companies, big ones like Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu, etc. They are pouring huge amount of money into all key areas in STEM subjects, you know, in medicine, AI, you know, etc. So potentially it's a great opportunity for people to look in, into the East to, you know, like further their academic career. And uh, even they are not deciding to come immediately, perhaps they can see if they have any friends in China, they can submit joint proposals to get fundings from, you know, enterprise either in China or overseas or from governments, you know, at home and abroad, which will be quite exciting. Okay, so um, I think perhaps uh, we can also go to the next question, which I think I want to invite all the panelists to talk about. If each of you can give me one really exciting, successful international research collaboration your university has already established with an overseas university, I think it will really help our audience to understand the scale and uh, the commitments 
you know, from different sites. Shall we start from our friends in HIT? It's for the international collaboration. Um, for the students, uh, in the students level, we have a very outstanding collaboration with the CMU. We have one plus one program. So that's sending the, our master students to the uh, to uh, CMU to get their master degree. And also we, are, we have this kind of a joint master degree. And also we have a three plus one plus one. There's a lot of, um, yes, program with the, uh, the outstanding university. I think also for the Collaboration. Uh, we have a lot of uh, research collaboration, and uh, I think uh, just in this year we have uh, our our touring uh, scientist joined our lab, and um, which is uh, uh, Sifakis, Professor Sifakis, and uh, doing the Internet of Things. Uh, there is a I think a lot uh, there is a lot of uh, young teachers joined that team and. Uh, did a lot of a great, great job. And also, you know, we have just uh, um, come uh, to build our faculty of computing, which includes three schools, the computer science and the software engineering and the, the, uh, the information security. So we are getting bigger and bigger. We, yes, we really act very active in the international also in the, I think in the AI, such as AI and uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, errors for the researchers to start. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And actually, I forgot to mention HIT is uh, extremely strong in terms of robotic. So if uh, you want to perhaps build your own, you know, smart robots for any purpose in the future, I think HIT can be a really exciting place to be. Is that right? Yes, yes, very good, very, very, yes, good idea. <laughs> uh, and I also hear that um, the aerospace related discipline in HIT is also quite strong. So I don't know if any of our, you know, audience is uh, dreaming to become the next Elon Musk and try to, you know, launch the Mars related mission or to the outer space. I, I think there's a lot of things can be done. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, goes to Victor. What about Tsinghua? Yeah, thank you. I, uh, I also like to echo to the, the, the questions that uh, we are also working really hard in terms of uh, international collaborations. As you can tell from our name, uh, international is our major um, effort. So let me share with you uh, a uh, successful story, uh, which is the uh, partnerships with UC Berkeley. So we launched uh, the uh, Tsinghua Berkeley Shenzhen Institute uh, five years ago. Uh, and this is a long-term collaboration. We just signed the second uh, um, phase contracts to continue the collaboration for another five years. And I'm looking forward to another five, 10 or 15 years collaborations. So what we did in these collaborations is that we uh, have about 26 uh, UC Berkeley professors uh, joining us in these institutes. They come to, they come to Shenzhen to teach, to advise students and to participate in all the academic activities uh, in the past five years. And we've been doing really well. Uh, both Tsinghua and Berkeley have been uh, really happy about these collaborations. And Building on these collaborations, we uh, just established two major laboratories. Uh, one is the uh, op International Open Source Laboratory, uh, RIS-5 uh, Open Source Laboratory, led by Professor David Patterson, uh, the winner of the 2017 Turing Award. And the other one is the Shenzhen Game Graphene Research Center, led by uh, the Nobel Laureate, Angel Game. And we are trying to build on these uh, research collaborations to have more international partners uh, in different areas, not, not, not just in North America, but also in Europe, in um, Asia, in um, maybe Middle East. So we are working really closely with uh, uh, our international co uh, collaborators to have uh, established the joint programs uh, and student exchange, faculty exchange, and etc. So I uh, and we have um, um, 
one of our major uh, missions is to grow our faculty uh, body to have at least one third of international uh, scholars all over from all over the world. In addition to that, we also plan to grow our student body to also have one third students from internationals. So we uh, are looking forward to have more uh, peoples from all over the world to join us. Yeah. Fantastic, okay. Victor. I think you probably have been very modest because uh, Tsinghua has been doing so much things, you know, on uh, international collaboration, including, as far as I know, creating the Global Alliance on University on Climate Change to, you know, work with top universities around the world to develop, you know, the sustainable goal as part of the UN, you know, agenda, which I think is very important. And also Bill Gates Melinda Foundation gave a big donation uh, in Tsinghua to set up the Global Institute of Drug Development with a special focus on, you know, tackling a lot of major issues, you know, in Africa and developing countries. So I, I think, you know, if the audience are interested, I, I'm sure they can find out more from the university website of each of the panelists who are representing here today. And also, I'm very delighted. Let's go, go next to Shanghai to, to hear more exciting stuff on your side, you know. Okay. Um, the Chinese government welcomed high-level talent to join the country constructions. For example, uh, Shanghai Tech is building up hard X-ray systems. We search of scientists and engineers from all over the world. Uh, sure, a visiting academy is possible. Uh, a visa is for the foreigners visiting. Um, can stay in China three or six months. We have international students also with exchange program with lots of famous universities all, all, all over the world. For, uh, for example, for Oxford and, uh, and uh, UC Berkeley and uh, the, the Stanford universities. So uh, we welcome all of the talent join us. Thank you very much. Thank you. And another thing, you know, probably some audience uh, know is um, there is a big strategy to integrate the Yangtze River Delta, which incorporates, you know, Shanghai, Zhejiang and uh, Jiangsu and the Anhui province. So we can see that as the main entrance of the Yangtze River Delta, obviously Shanghai will play an increasingly more important role, you know, among the original integration. So I think, you know, Shanghai Tech will be, you know, play, you know, more and more exciting opportunities, you know, for any international collaboration. Good. Let's go to our neighboring, you know, like province in Nanjing. Uh, Professor Liu, do you want to add some points? Yes. Uh, I have to say the Nanjing University have a very long history about international collaborations. Maybe, you know, maybe 30 years before, there's a very well known centers. You can check it on the Google. It is called the John Hopkins University and the Nan University Center. It's for uh, a collaboration between America and China. We, uh, in, the, in the history, we always think we should strengthen the international collaborations because we believe the science, we should share the science together. And uh, we welcome all the friends and all the students to come to our university. That's wonderful. Um, yeah. How about uh, our friend at Sichuan University? Would you like to add a few words? Uh, okay, so uh, Sichuan University has three levels of international collaboration, the student level, teaching level, and the research level. For students, we sent about three to 5,000 students abroad every year. And we also invite about 500 to 1,000 students to come to Sichuan University every year, including the major international teaching week in the summer. We invite students all over the world, all the professors all over the world to come to China, come to Sichuan University to do two weeks teaching and study with our students. And for the uh, short time visiting scholars, for example, we have several, in my, in my department, we have several ecologists. They are very 
uh, interested in the uh, very spe special environment such as the Himalaya mountains where we are located. So they will spend about two to three months per year to China. While they are doing the field trip, they can also do some teaching in the university, so which will be benefiting both of us. And uh, for the research part, we have, as you mentioned, we have very good medical school. So we normally has, uh, uh, every year we have the international conference between the uh, West China Hospital to the major hospital in US, where we will ex ex uh, exchange students. Also, as we have a very good engineering school, so many, because we are dealing with the Yangtze River, the upstream of the Yangtze River, and we have a lot of construction. So we have a lot of international collaboration between China and uh, such as Germany and uh, Israel. And I think uh, they have different levels of international collaboration. And if you are interested, you can always contact us. We can always uh, assign a uh, staff who is a uh, uh, particular expert in one aspect, who is um, better than me, because I'm a many uh, professor doing teaching, but I think our staff has been better than me. Thank you. That's wonderful. And uh, as everyone knows, if you really love Tanda, you know, like Sichuan is definitely a great place to explore. And I think yeah. they have like a special zone where you can get close to Tanda, even touch them. Is that true? Uh, yes, we have. <laughs> Research center with Chengdu uh, City and the very, very close relationship with, especially my department, because so actually we participated in sequence in the Panda genome in 2012, I think. And uh, we can even show you which panda was sequenced, because he has, he has a name. And uh, uh, I think uh, every year, because I also sometimes meet my collaborators go to the research center. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, you are allowed to touch them, but I think you have to under certain circumstances. But uh, yeah, but if you, but we have this resource center from the very little baby panda to the giant panda, and also it covers all the uh, from the research to the uh, to the, the field. So we have also very good uh, research team. They are tracking panda in the wild. So basically, yeah, it's part, it's just one of the uh, attractive things in Chengdu. And if you want to come back, come to Chengdu, we can also show you the rest of them. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's truly exciting. Um, I think some of the audience are some questions which I probably want to uh, start now. It's quite, you know, relevant. So the audience is saying, you know, how, how has the COVID you know, 19 impacted the recruitment and the recruitment process. Do you have any additional information or update for job seekers? I think that's a, that's a very good question. So uh, shall we start from our friends in HIT? Yes, I think for the, yeah, for this COVID-19 for our university, I think that is, uh, that is not a problem for them. So we are really open to the world and to the, especially to the applicants. And if they are applying for HIT, just a, a several steps, they, they need to prove they're healthy and to do some test. I think that's all. We, we don't worry strict with that. It's just a very normal. So don't be scared by the, the, the COVID-19. So HIT is very open. And I, for them, it's not a, I think it's not a block. It's not a block. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I understand that now COVID-19 in China is pretty much fully controlled and uh, we don't have any university to have any positive case of COVID-19. Is that right? Sure. So I think for is uh, we are getting to normal. So it's especially also we have to to obey some rules. And but it's not very not very special rules for the uh, um, overseas applicants. I think it's just uh, like us. You you have to do some some several tests. So that's all. It's not it, it's not that, that difficult. So. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. How about uh, Professor Liu uh, from Nanjing University? Would you also want to perhaps comment on that point on COVID nineteen? 
I think my opinion is the same to the HIT. Yeah, I think the COVID-19 is not a block. Actually, now our university, for example, many uh, friends and many experts uh, ask me the, almost the same question. And we, uh, of course, we have some procedures to invite you to our universities, but in a very safety way. You know, China now uh, usually uh, is a very safety place, but uh, if you uh, pass, if you hold a uh, work permit, you can go to our university directly, no problem, I think. Thank you. I think that's really reassuring. And actually, some people told me that they feel China is one of the safest places now in the world during the COVID pandemic. I think that's probably quite true based on the discussion and the information we have gathered so far. And uh, also, as you know, to move to another country sometimes can be quite daunting experience. So some of our audience have asked, is it possible to come to China on a short-term basis, maybe as a visiting academics? And uh, if that's the case, what kind of opportunities are available and how could they possibly apply in terms of temporary relocating, including visas, etc.? Uh, Victor, do you want to maybe um, tell them a bit more about that? Yeah, thank you. Um, in terms of the visa, I need to check with our international office. I think we do have several uh, faculty members who will trap outside China before, but now they came back uh, using some types of special visa. Uh, and I think right now, uh, China has three types of visas uh, that would allow uh, international people to come to China. Uh, but of course, the 14 day quarantines uh, is a must. So uh, that cannot be avoided. Um, but what I like to reply to these questions was that I not only think that is a block, but also a uh, opportunities. I think COVID is an opportunity in terms of research. Um, number one, we never stop hiring, okay? Even during uh, February and March, we continue the hirings using uh, Zooms and other uh, web um, remote meetings to interview the candidates. So we never stop. And some of the excellent candidates, uh, we can actually uh, pretty much determine right, the, the offer uh, by the remote meetings. And of course, some are really serious. Uh, and of course, we would like to find a way to get them to here and meet them on campus. Uh, so that's number one. Number two uh, is the research opportunities for this COVID. Uh, we, I never done research on COVID-19, but now because of that pandemics, and now I'm also analyzing the data related to uh, COVID-19. And I can see a lot of researchers now putting their effort, trying to conquer these pandemics. Uh, and the governments are also uh, putting a lot of funding opportunities to facilitate uh, research in terms of pandemics, uh, uh, epidemic disease, uh, both in bios and also in data science. Um, and modeling, like simulation and optimization, etc. So I think that uh, part, if we look at it positively, uh, we can actually uh, have a better position, in a better position to conquer uh, COVID-19. Yeah, and also, you know, I, I remember uh, Tsinghua University has recently launched an institute on global, global health. And I think one of the previous leader of WHO is currently your honorary chairman. So I think, you know, different Chinese university has been doing like new research looking at, you know, pandemic control and public health in general. So I think, you know, in every challenges, there are probably more opportunities, yeah. So uh, shall we also maybe get some advice from our Shanghai Tech, you know, experts on this area, especially like uh, short-term visiting opportunities, you know, for academia who want to have a feel about the greatness of Chinese Academy of Science, you know, related, you know, activities, etc. 
Yeah, uh, we, we also opened the position as a visiting professor, uh, visiting research and help them to do the visa applica application as I introduced before at visa. This kind of position is based on the collaboration, collaboration with our PI, lab of a platform. We also welcome to people who have a different teaching staff to uh, to, to have the, uh, to have a different teaching staff to to do teach face to the the undergraduates also uh, welcome the the the, uh, the some applicants to our visiting position yeah thank you thank you that's wonderful and uh, I I also actually have a follow up question you know. Uh, to our friends in Shanghai Tech. So I know the Chinese Academy of Science have more than 100 different research institutes. So if I collaborate with your university, would I be also have access to one of the 100 plus research institutes which are part of sure. Chinese Academy of Science? Sure. Yeah, um, uh, if, you, uh, you, if you visit our university, you, you can have a sum of the rights to access the Chinese Academy of Science. Um, uh, especially uh, some of the institutes collaborating with the Shanghai Tech in Shanghai, in Shanghai local local area. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. I, I think you know there are something very exciting. You know, at the Nanjing University, Professor Liu, could you please maybe also add some you know commentary on this point, please? Yes, I want to say a new role given by the China government about how foreigners go into our university. Okay, uh, this is saying that effective from September 28 this year, foreign nationals holding valid Chinese residence permits for work, personal matters and renews, renewings are allowed to enter China with no need for applying for new visas. If the above three categories of residence permits held by foreign national expired expired after uh, March 28, 28 March uh, this year, the holders may apply for relevant visas by presenting the expired residence permits and the relevant materials to the Chinese embassies or consolators on, on the condition that the purpose of the holders visas visit to China uh, <laughs> remain unchanged. That's encouraging, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, am I clear? Yes, very clear. So basically there will be much easier process of Yes, this means citizens. you need to apply new visas. That, that's really convenient. I'm sure it will probably attract more people to okay. consider working here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. And another question I, I think, you know, our audience are very interested to figure out is um, what are the main benefits of pursuing an academic career in China in comparison to other locations such as the UK? I, I want to invite uh, each of the panelists to give a very short summary about this question because I think many people are really interested. Uh, shall we start from, you know, uh, Yang Zhang from Sichuan University, please. Oh, I think that's a very good question because uh, uh, in short, I think you just say, if you want to embrace the one of the biggest economy uh, body in the world, I think, you should go to China, at least you should know China. Uh, many of my research collaborators, they come to China first to, uh, in the purpose of research purpose, but later they are in love with Chinese culture. And uh, the more you understand us, the better we can work together. I think that's something uh, uh, you should come to China. Thank you. Uh, how about our friends as HIT? So I think in Harbin, we are not that uh, very expensive. Everything is so in Harbin is very, very friendly city. And also we have our very, um, I think it's the school, we have good four seasons, very clear. And in winter, we're very cold. In summer, we have very hot, hot, hot weather. 
So yeah, it's good. And also if uh, come to Harbin, so the living cost is not a problem. It's very, it's very cheap actually compared to the abroad. And also in China, people in Harbin, we are a kind of international city. So they are, people are very friendly to oversee foreigners. This is another part. And in HIT also we have uh, for, if we, the applicants join HIT, join HIT, we have the kindergartens and elementary school and high school. We have this belongs to our university. So that is very, very convenient for them for the, for the life and for also for their, for, for, for their, for, for their family. And um, also is, uh, they can to, to find a house very close to the campus. So the, the, it's very cheap, it's not very expensive, such as for the, uh, compared to the other city. So I think Harbin is a very, very nice city. And um, we have uh, also HIT are very active in these years in international um, collaboration also for the foreigners, the students also, also for the fact is that they have, um, they, they are, we are growing, they are growing. So I think um, Harbin is a very charming city, so very, so if you want to check, so come to HIT, come to Harbin, we will show you. <laughs> That's yes. wonderful. I remember Harbin is especially famous in the winter time when you have yeah. everything made from this kind of ice castles and yes. the, like sculptures almost feel like frozen in the Walt Disney, you know, like cartoon, which is very popular worldwide. Every year we have the ice festival, so it's very nice. So all the people all over the world, also all over the country, come to Harbin, so it's, it's very crowded and a very nice city, yes. Thank you. Uh, how about Victor, you know, would you tell us a bit more at Tsinghua, especially in Shenzhen? Right, yeah, I'd like to uh, share with you some of these uh, uh, opportunities in Shenzhen. So Greater Bay areas includes nine cities. Uh, Shenzhen is the, I would say, one of the major cities in addition to uh, Hong Kong, Macau, and also Guangzhou. So uh, the economics booming in Shenzhen and also the Greater Bay areas. And Shenzhen is considered as the innovation uh, cities. In other words, there are so many new startups, um, so many ideas that can be implemented in, in Shenzhen. So if you have some research uh, that you want to um, transfer, then Shenzhen would be the best place uh, to try it out. And as you may heard about this, Shenzhen is the, um, how to translate that, it's a pilot city in China to be, uh, to, to do the um, economic uh, revolutions, technology revolutions, to build up role models for other cities in China. That's what we uh, just saw the news. Sensing uh, Sifan, that's what they call in, 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 in Chinese. So it's a great opportunity. And there's some particular uh, example like I'd like to share with you. For example, really low tax rate for um, international um, scholars at about like 15% tax rates. Okay, so amazing. And uh, we also, the Shenzhen government is also doing something, for example, uh, stable fundings. So they are providing these uh, stable research fundings to the universities in, in Shenzhen to make sure that they can support the faculty members in a more stable uh, manner. So these are all these research. Uh, but never forget to mention yeah, the industrial supports, the industrial collaborations in Shenzhen. <coughs> All these companies like Tensions, uh, Meituans, and uh, BIJs, and all these uh, Foxconns, and, 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 and so forth, they all are located in Shenzhen, or at least has a headquarter or um, a branch in Shenzhen. And we are working closely uh, with them. For example, we are working with Meituan uh, to build a major research laboratories on future uh, livings, how to make our future livings more uh, uh, smarter, uh, our life better, uh, and etc. So uh, with that, I just want to share with you with all these great opportunities, both government and industrial support. 
That's wonderful. Uh, unfortunately, we only have five minutes left. So I'm going to, you know, ask each of the panelists to give a very brief 30 second summaries of any tips they want to share with uh, the audience. So shall we start with um, Professor Liu from Nanjing University? Okay, just one summary. Uh, Nanjing is a very ancient city and a very beautiful. Welcome to China. Welcome to Nanjing University. Thank you. And uh, Professor Yang Zhang from Sichuan University. So I think it will be much easier for a British to live in China than a Chinese to live in UK. So I think uh, I've been UK, so I kind of been successful. So I think you will be more successful if you come to China. Uh, we are all welcome you to come to China, especially in Chengdu, in Sichuan University. Thank you. With Panda, right? Yes, with Panda. <laughs> that would be lovely. Thank you. And uh, how about uh, Dr. Yu from HIT? Yes, uh, yes, I, I should. Uh, one point is uh, we have one university, three campus. These three campuses are located in Harbin and in Shandong province, Weihai. <laughs> and also we have another uh, campus in Shenzhen. So for the audience, if you are interested in each of these city, so please contact us and also HIT. In, I think in applying uh, for the fundings, we have a really good a good score in, in, in a play application of funding. So it's a very nice, a place for your research and also for your life. And please enjoy. Yes, welcome to HIT. Thank That's you. That's all. Thank you very much. And uh, how about uh, Miss Yu Zhou from Shanghai Tech? Do you want to give a few okay, words? This is the uh, last minute I can, I can say with the development of Shanghai Tech and uh, uh, you were a world sense of achievement and we will be proud of your devices. We can offer the, the initial research support package, start funding, space and competitive working environment. Uh, especially we can offer the, the faculty apartment on campus. This is very important for all the faculties. We can offer the affiliated school and the kindergarten. Uh, you can enjoy your life. Uh, at last, uh, we may say, the Shanghai is a very, uh, very beautiful and uh, the, the safety international cities. You were enjoying the Shanghai. You were enjoying the Shanghai Tech. Welcome, join us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And lastly, let's have Victor. Yeah, thank you. So let me summarize uh, in three eyes: internationals, interdisciplinary, and industry. Internationals. As I mentioned, we are working with our international uh, partners uh, to build like um, exchange programs and joint programs. We are actually offering this and English programs. We need people to teach in English. Um, so that's in the international part. Interdisciplinary, we have uh, three important interdisciplinary programs uh, covering uh, many, many areas, including in electrical engineering, uh, control science, uh, data science, computer science, and so forth. So please check out our website and you will find uh, topics that may be, that I'm sure will be related to your uh, areas. And industries, there are many, many uh, collaborations available in Shenzhen. We've been talking to our industrial partner every day. So, uh, I'm sure you can find a collaborations uh, in Shenzhen quite easily. Welcome to Shenzhen. Finally, on behalf of jobs.ac.uk, I would like to thank all our you know, panelists for their time and insight today. And thank you all for watching. And we hope you will find this webinar useful. And uh, thank you very much. And see you at lunchtime for our next webinar. Bye-bye. <laughs>